okay, so you think any current is a kind of in this current. You know, a bar magnet approaches that coil. We know that there's a change in magnetic flux. This change in magnetic flux causes any discordant in the coil. But this time we are going to approach a bar magnet, not to a coil, to a rigid object, copper. Copper is a conductor as well. In fact, uh, in here we are using also copper. All the differences, these are coils, loops. In here we don't have loop, we have a rigid object. Copper, copper. When a bar magnet approaches towards this copper block, so it will cause a change in magnetic flux, correct? Mm -hmm. Of course, cause change in magnetic mm -hmm. flux induces current in copper block. And this current induced in this copper block is called as any current. When a conducting bar moves in a magnetic field, mm -hmm. this conducting bar can be a copper block, then you can also move the copper block towards the magnetic field, or you can release a magnetic field towards the copper block. Same, similar thing, in fact. Circular currents within the material is induced due to the variation of the magnetic flux. So because of the change of magnetic flux through this material, there will be an induced current. These circular induced currents are called eddy currents. Now we are going to see a bar magnet will be released towards them. Uh, this is a very large industrial strength mm -hmm. magnet. It's made of rare earth metal, uh, diademium magnets called. Mm -hmm. It's made of iron, boron, and nickel, and uh, it has two sides, the north side and its south side, and this is a piece of pure copper, and what the magnet induces in the copper is called an eddy current. It basically generates small pools of swirling electrons to resist the movement of the magnetic field that this induces on this. So what that does basically is resist that magnet from falling like a normal object on like a piece of wood. Um, so it kind of cushions itself, as you can see. And you can spin it, you can drop it, and you can induce torque onto the copper from the magnet itself. So without touching, I can move. That's basically what I do here at Mega Drive is I use a bunch of these to spin a very large disc and that disc induces torque and that creates a coupling without actually touching one shaft to another. So that's my job. Okay. So do you remember there was a concept which told you question you are going to draw the bar magnet towards the ring? Yes. Yeah. How the examination of the bar magnet is? It's missing it's less than free yes. circulation. But what was the reason? Because As the bar magnet is approaching with ample, yes. so opposite poles, unlike poles, are the light poles will face each other, they will try to repel each other. This is the same thing. When you drop this bar this magnet, this is a very strong magnet, right? So this is a just like a coil, it's a copper. So magnetic flux through the coil changes. Because if ampoule is approaching this, this uh, copper block, oh, a both sides becomes ampoule. And then and, and then repel each other. That's why magnet is not falling just like G. Understand? G, it's full. If you drop it so that S pole is approaching, again, light poles face each other. A pair of force appear, appears between the copper block and the magnet. So then that's why it's not falling just like free fall. Yeah, its acceleration is less than free fall acceleration. That a conceptual challenge, in fact, a part of this. Only difference is in that conceptual challenge, you have a single loop, that current is not so strong, but this is a rigid object. In here, those currents are very strong, which are called eddy currents. Yeah, and while magnet is approaching through this copper block, Magnetic flux through the copper block is changing. This change of magnetic flux induces circular currents on the surface of this copper block. Why circular? Because magnetic field must be, if say an ampoule is approaching, it must be upward, huh? magnetic field. So all curl four fingers, electric current direction, so it's going to be a circle. There, is, there will be circular currents on the surface of the this copper block. These circular swirling currents are called eddy currents. Where are they used? This uh, current, every current, not all this current, 
can be used for heating. Heaters. We are using current, huh? Heaters. Or cooking. You can use that. Because as there is a current, current causes increase in the temperature of the material. And you can use them in heating furnaces. They are used in furnaces. Car brake systems to slow down the car. You see that the man is started to, by using this current, it start to move in the copper block. You see that? Then it applies a force on an object. So to break an old car, you need to apply a force, correct? So also you can use it in car brake systems and also detecting metals in airports and underground for searching the treasures. You are going to use adequate because when magnet is approaching, see that underground there is gold, yeah. okay? Then you drop a magnet towards that gold, there will be current in the gold. This current produces a magnetic field. Uh, when you detect it, magnet, you oh my god, here is a gold. Then you are going to dig in here and you are going to be the richest person. <laughs> on the earth. Okay, this is how they are used. This is an exam question. Where is it used? Any currents are used where? Any currents are used in furnaces, car brake systems, and detecting metals in airports and also underground. Airports, they are checking your body. Yes. There is a magnetic field. If there is a gun, gun gun's uh, body is metal, eh? When they make closer to the magnet, so what's happening? The gun's body produces adequates, and these adequates are making their own magnetic field, and they can understand that you are creating a gun or not, or a metal object, a knife, for example. So this is what a current is, swirling currents because of the change of magnetic flux to a rigid metal object. It's called a current used in furnaces, carburetor systems, detecting metals in underground and also airports. So inside story is about electric guitar pickups. So what is electric guitar pickup? Which converts the vibration of the string, that is sound, into electrical signal. We convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. We got, in fact it is similar to a microphone. Microphone is also converting this sound to electric signal. So electric guitar pickups also converting sound to electric signal. And this definition is the definition of the pickup, so which is better to know it. Pickup refers a device that picks up the sound of an instrument, and we will get the sound of the instrument, and convert it to electric signal, just as the microphone. And three basic components that uh, guitar pickup has, one of them is permanent magnet. So first component is a permanent magnet. This is permanent magnet with N pole and S pole. You see that color is close to the blue. So with N pole and S pole, it's a permanent magnet. First component. Second component is a coil of copper wire wound around the magnet. You see these wires? So these wires are wound around the permanent magnet. So it's coiled. Second component is the coil. And third component is the guitar string. This about these guitar strings are a little different than the other guitar string. These are made from a magnetic material, ferromagnetic materials, nickel or steel, which can be magnetized. So the third component is metal guitar string, which is ferromagnetic material. Remember when in the when we are when we started the first section. I did an experiment. I hold a magnet and then pins started to be attracted by the magnet. Remember it? Because pins, uh, normally they don't, they are not a magnet, but when you keep them closer to a magnet, so the domains of the pin becomes regularly arranged and the pin starts to behave like a magnet. And uh, it, the magnet attracts the pin because uh, close end of the pin becomes for today, they say that you approach the south end of the south pole of the magnet, close end becomes north. If you approach to the north, close end becomes south, and they start attracting each other. Similarly, in here, this permanent magnet is kept closer to the guitar string. This guitar string becomes magnetized. Of course, close side must be S, because N faces to S, close side 
plus surface of the string is going to be S. Far surface is going to be M. So this segment of this guitar string will be magnetized. After that, you are going to plug the string for playing the guitar. Huh? And when plug the string guitar string starts vibrating. What vibrating guitar string causes a change in magnetic fields and magnetic flux. It causes a change in magnetic field and causes a change in magnetic flux. Which magnetic flux? Look at it here. So when the string is vibrating, sometimes it gets closer, gets farther, closer, farther, closer, farther, closer, farther. So magnetic flux through the coil will change. When the string gets closer, magnetic flux increases. When the string gets farther, decreases. And so we know that increase and decrease in magnetic flux in the current in the coil. Only the directions are different. When it's approaching, say that positive is the electric current, when moving away, negative direction changes. So direction of the current, this current changes according to the vibration frequency of this string. How many times string vibrates? Electric current, this electric signal also changes its direction with the same frequency. That's why everything, everything about the string is carried to the electric signal. Same frequency, same amplitude, similar amplitude they will have. After that, you are going to amplify this signal. You know what does amplify mean? Increasing the amplitude to make it powerful. After that, send it to loudspeaker. You will get exactly the same sounds of the string. This is what an electric guitar becomes is similar to the microphone. On what principle does it work? On the principle of electromagnetic inductions. So change in magnetic flux induces a current in the coil. 